Hello grade 11s and welcome back to my channel. I'm Miss Martins. In today's video, we're going to be going over what you can expect for term two for physical sciences. I'll be going over what the different topics are this term, the subtopics, what you need to know for each topic. I give you formulas. And in this video, I'm going to tell you how to prepare for these topics as well. So I'll give you lots of teacher tips on how to prepare coming from me being a teacher myself. And I will show you all of this in free document that I've created for you. It's available on my website missmartins.co.za if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please make sure to subscribe because all the topics that i mentioned in today's video i will be making more videos on those topics if i don't have videos on them already in my channel before we jump into the topics and into the video i just want to remind you that the order of the topics in this video are listed according to the atps these are the annual teaching plans published by the Department of Basic Education. And basically, it's just a document that suggests the order in which teachers should teach the topics. So your school may cover the topics in a different order than what the ATPs state. So you just need to double check the order with your teacher and with your school. But I'm going according to the ATPs. Most schools follow the ATPs. And I've created this free document where I basically list each topic and each subtopic in detail. I give you formula sheets. You can find this on my website, missmartins.co.za, and it's free to download. Link in the description box below. And I've set the document up in such a way that it is like a checklist. So you can print it, stick it in your book, use it while you're going through the topics in class or while you are studying. And basically, you can use it to see if you have covered everything. So in this video, I will be going over the different topics, what you can expect in the subtopics, the formulas and stuff that you need to know. I give you special formula sheets that expand on the normal formula sheets. And I tell you how to prepare for the topic so that when you do it in class, you are prepared already. That's a major first step to help you, you know, improve your science marks. So as you can see behind me, this is the document that you can get for free. They are the topics behind me on the screen. So we've got electromagnetism, which is a physics topic, electric circuits, which is a physics topic, We've got atomic combination, so that's all about chemical bonding and all of that stuff. It's chemistry and intermolecular forces, which is also chemistry. Again, you can get this on my website as well as other things that I make and publish on there. So go check that out. It'll be especially helpful for this term because of the chemistry stuff that I'm doing on there. So our first topic is called electromagnetism. Now, as the topic name suggests, it's basically the crossover between electric fields and magnetic fields. This is very important. It leads on to an important topic in grade 12 that you need to know how to do. And basically, what you the subtopics that you'll be covering are listed over here. You will be doing calculations. There are two new formulae that you will learn. I do include a data sheet to show you what these formulae are. So these are the things that you need to know for this subtopic. It's a good idea to go through your textbook in advance to prepare for this topic. So you can prepare for this topic by going over magnetism from grade 10, how to draw magnetic field lines and the directions, and to read up on theory. It's a very short topic, so don't stress out too much about it, but it is a good idea to go over this in order to prepare. Our next topic, and this is quite a big one, this is one that a lot of learners struggle with, it is called electric circuits. Now you start off with something that your teachers may have taught you in grade 10 already, and that is Ohm's law. So V equals I times R, that formula, but you learn it in a little bit more depth. You learn the definition, the different graphs, the relationships, ohmic versus non-ohmic conductors. You have to give examples of those. And then, of course, you need to be able to apply Ohm's law in a circuit. So basically all circuit calculations where you have series resistors, parallel resistors. We also focus a lot on power and work or energy in grade 11. And obviously, now I hope that this goes without saying, this is a grade 11 topic. You learned it in grade 11, but it is tested again in grade 12. So all the stuff that you learn here won't be retested again. You need to remember the stuff for grade 12. So this, these formulae over here, power um, and the work or energy formulae, you probably didn't do that in very much depth in grade 10. It carries on into the next page. You will learn about EMF and internal resistance and how to calculate it. So I don't know if you remember, but in grade 10, we always said that we ignore the resistance of the battery. Well, we no longer ignore that in grade 11 and in grade 12. So you work with internal resistance. You can see in the formula at the top there, there's a little baby R, internal resistance. We work with EMF. 
And you also need to calculate the cost of electricity, which is actually something that a lot of you already do in grade nine natural sciences. So not difficult, but you use kilowatt hours and the tariff or the cost in order to work that out. So the biggest change I would say in grade 11 is including internal resistance in the calculations. So how do you prepare for this? You need to go over all of your electricity from grade 10. So what I mean by that is go over the definitions, the formulae, the theory, and practice as many grade 10 electric circuit questions as possible. Now, I know I'm saying grade 10 electric circuits questions or electricity questions, but it's really important to understand that you learn it in grade 10, but those same types of questions are asked in grade 11 and grade 12. There might be slightly more things that they ask. Like, for example, they might include internal resistance or they might ask you how to calculate power. But the basics are things that you still need to know how to do from grade 10. So where a lot of my students go wrong, the students that I teach in class is they forget how to do grade 10 electricity. And then they try and learn new stuff on top of that. And then they can't do it. So you need to be able to do the grade 10 stuff first. Make sure you can do it well. So go to my channel. I have loads of videos on grade 10 electric, electric circuits past paper practice. So you might want to start there. And then just so that you can see, I do have a data sheet for you that I have done on electric circuits. So these are all the formulas that you will be able to use by the end of doing the electric circuits topic. Our next section or our next topic is basically called atomic combinations. Now, this is a chemistry topic. It's quite a broad chemistry topic. It includes a lot of things relating to bonding, chemical bonding. So you can see here I said subtopics and I list everything that falls under this. It's quite a lot, as you can see. Basically, you need to know about chemical bonding. You need to draw Lewis dot diagrams. You need to understand valence electrons. You need to be able to define bond length, bond energy. We speak a lot about covalent bonds and then molecular shapes. So, for example, the shape of this compound over here, this is called a bent shape or an angular shape. For example, water, H2O, has a bent shape. You'll be able to tell what shape the molecule is based on the Lewis dot diagram and the electronegativity calculations and the, the electronegativity calculations for each bond. This is what you're going to be learning in this topic. State of covalent bonds. And here we go. We speak about electronegativity and using that difference to tell me the molecular shape. It's a very interesting topic, but there is quite a lot of theory involved and quite a bit of understanding. So in order to prepare, you can go over the topic called grade 10 chemical bonding. So I have done um, videos on this on my channel, but it's basically ionic versus covalent bonding. How to draw the Lewis dot diagrams for covalently bonded compounds understanding what valence electrons are, how to count the number of valence electrons or how to determine the number of valence electrons, what electronegativity is, all of that stuff will really, really help you when you get to this topic in grade 11. And please practice your Lewis dot diagrams. It's going to be a big help for when you start this in class. Then our last topic is called intermolecular forces. Now this basically flows from the previous topic. They're connected. So you obviously do that topic first, then it carries on into this topic. And intermolecular forces, you did touch on it in grade 10. So remember when something's in a solid phase versus a liquid phase versus a gas phase, the intermolecular forces between the particles or the molecules are different. So for example, in a solid, you have very strong intermolecular forces and the particles are packed closely together, very dense. In a gas, you have very weak intermolecular forces the particles are far apart. So it's building on that knowledge from grade 10 and taking the new stuff that you learned from the previous topic. And we basically speak about how these intermolecular forces affect things like boiling points, melting points, vapor pressure, solubility. So for example, you will learn that the stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the boiling points, because it needs more energy to overcome those intermolecular forces. That's something that we say a lot in this topic. So how can you prepare? Going over physical and chemical change from grade 10, going over the kinetic molecular theory, phase changes, how that works. So everything that I basically just mentioned, that will be a very big help for this topic. Just remember to subscribe to my channel for videos on these topics. I already have some videos, but I'm definitely gonna be making a lot more this term. So. You can find my videos that already exist over there. 
and to help you prepare for some of the stoichiometry. It's more so stoichiometry that's going to come up next term. I have a guide that you can look at on my website and I do have playlists on these topics. So you can go over grade 10 electricity, grade 11 and 12 electricity, chemical bonding and grade 11 chemistry exam practice. So I really hope that this video has been helpful for you. Remember to subscribe for more videos in the future and I'll see you in a video very shortly.